Or was it Jordan? Oh, no, you're right. It was Marilee. She and I are now partners. See, I want to tell you something, Jay. I want to tell you what your problem is. You just don't know how to treat women. What did she go to you for? Because she knew that I would enjoy seeing you beaten just as much as she would. And everything I did for that woman? <laughs> Including her husband's suicide? He was a loser anyhow, you know that. And you promised to marry her? Get out of here, Barnes, before I throw you out. I'm tired of looking at your face. <clears throat> oh, listen, now there is just one more thing. Now that I own that Wellington property, there isn't anything I can't give Sue Ellen. There's no way that you can keep us apart. Well, hell, I might even invite you to the wedding. Get out! <laughs> You just get dumber and dumber every day. <laughs> Barnes? That'll be all, Marie. Yes, sir. I brought you a little present. Hope you like it. What is that? Well, considering your background, I can understand why you don't recognize oil when you see it. <laughs> I know that that's oil, but why are you giving it to me? Because there's more pure crude in that one quart container than you're ever going to get off that Wellington property you're drilling for right now. J.R., you know something? You are the king of sour grapes. I know how bad you wanted that land, and you just don't stop, do you? Well, if I had bought that land, I would have paid for it with my own money. I wouldn't have stolen it from my company. What are you talking about? I've known about this from the beginning. I set you up, Barnes. I told you, if you didn't stop seeing Sue Ellen, I was going to destroy you, and I did. You just don't know it yet. Get the hell out of my office. Well, now, I have a feeling that if I come back in about a week, this is not going to be your office anymore. Oh, you can keep the office. No charge. Barnes, Stonehurst. Thomas, this is Cliff Barnes. Uh, how's the drilling coming? Nothing but mud dirt so far. Well, I want you to double the cruise. I want you to go 24 hours a day, because there has to be oil there. There has to be oil there. You can tell him he's a thief, too. Well, that's an interesting word coming from you, Cliff. Here's your buyer, Mr. Barnes. Don't thank me. Don't thank me. Who should know better than I the kind of trouble you're in? I should have figured you'd be in on it. I'm the only prospective buyer you have in the state of Texas. Isn't that right, Russ? That's right, J.R. Well, I guess I'll leave you two alone to do your own negotiating. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, well, Cliff, how does this strike you? Because of my high regard for your lovely mother, I'm going to up the price of my offer. I mean, there's no reason that she should have to pay for your mistakes, huh? Four million dollars. Take it to leave it. And that will allow you to pay back the money you embezzled from Wentworth Tool and Die? Yeah, I know about that. I also know about the $500,000 that you still owe the company. And you don't have a penny to your name. But you know the old saying? Poverty builds character. Save the talk. Yeah, that's right, Cliff. You don't need any more talk. You need some money. Well, I have here a cashier's check for $4 million and no cents, which is yours, when you sign this little old deed. Thank you. Well, how's it feel, Cliff? A couple of days ago, you owned my oil field. You're going to marry my wife. You're expecting a big gusher. Oh, yeah, millionaire time. That's what it was. And now, you're over your head in debt, and the only property you own is a dry hole north of Lubbock. You have succeeded in becoming the perfect failure. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> I just don't believe it. <laughs>